this week, Q, we last week it was all about the defense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Now, now this week we're going to switch to offense. And okay. there's a lot going on, right? We're going to go position by position. We're going to talk to some different uh, guests about the Raiders offense from quarterback to running back to wide receiver to tight end. Uh, we heard a lot from Darren Waller this week, obviously, uh, as well as some other folks. We'll hear from Coach Gruden. So tomorrow's show, Monday Q, we'll get Gruden sound. We'll get Max, Mad Max Crosby sound after coming nice. back from the COVID uh, uh, sojourn. He'll be back and we can talk to him as well. Today we heard from Corey Littleton and we heard from Jeff Heath. So we'll bring you that sound as well. But Q, when you look at this offense, I'm, I'm uh, Raider fans are really getting their hopes up. I'm starting to see a lot of folks out there and you guys can tell us what you say in the comments here on our social channels. Uh, a lot of people now talking, you know, it used to be top 10 offense. Now they're talking top five offense. Yeah, I know. And, and I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to be the guy that brings down the mood in the room or anything, but I also want to caution. And yes, there's a, a lot of nice new pieces that the Raiders have on offense, uh, as well as some nice recurring p or pieces that are coming back from last year. So I do think that this, the offense can be really, really good. But when you talk about top five, man, you got to really be careful because there's some really stinking good offenses in the league, Kansas City, Baltimore, New Orleans. I mean, that's just three right there off top. So I mean, Top five is a good goal to have, but just be careful where you set your expectations because, again, remember, uh, the base of this John Gruden offense is still control the clock and, and not, you know, and elim eliminate the, the possessions that the opposing team could have. So uh, it's just one of those things, man. I, I think it could be top 10, but top five may be a little bit, uh, you know, it might be pushing it a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I, I do expect them to have a good year. Listen, I, people – with the Derek Carr thing, and we're going to talk about Derek Carr on, on the radio show tomorrow on Raider Nation Radio 920. By the way, outside Las Vegas, you can stream it, lvsportsnetwork.com, the TuneIn app, or on the Raiders.com website or from the Raiders mobile app. Look for podcasts, and you can find the live feed there, which I think is fueled by TuneIn on the Raiders website. So you can find us anywhere you want, and we're hearing from a lot of people all over the country that you are listening to us, and we appreciate that. We appreciate you guys. Without you, we're not on the air. So, But Q, yeah, with the offense, I mean, listen, you have the pieces now, but you can have pieces, and if you don't put them together and you don't click and you don't get the rhythm going, right. then it doesn't really matter. So the hard work has to be done. We're going to learn more starting this week, right? Tomorrow, the guys That's put big. pads on. They put That's pads big. on tomorrow. Yes, that is huge. And look, this is my thing. The other thing when it comes to, you know, having to prove it and that I don't believe that it's a top five offense yet just because, well, we haven't seen anything is the fact that they got 14 padded practices to get them ready for week one. That's it. That's it. That's it, yeah. guys. 14 padded practices, no preseason games. Maybe they'll have a scrimmage here and there with another team. But basically, the nuts and bolts of it are 14 padded practices, which is almost unknown to man. I mean, you know what I mean? Just that is not normal NFL preparation. 14 padded practices is nothing. No, it's nothing. Uh, listen, Michael Freeman, F controlling the clock, the ball, score touchdowns fast, strike score, or butts off. Michael, ain't going to happen, sounds man. Good. Well, watch, <laughs> yeah, it sounds it, good. It sounds, no, it sounds good. And look, hey, everybody likes exciting offense. You, 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 you're you watching Pat Mahomes, right? You see it. Right. Okay? As much as it hurts you because it's the Chiefs, that's what he does. He scores fast. That's not what the Raiders are going to do. They're going to get more vertical. Absolutely. They can open up the playbook now. They have yep. more opportunity to go vertical because of rugs and because Williams hopefully healthy. So that's great. And yes, you'll see more of it, but you have to look at the offense. It's still a ball control offense cue. It's still based around run the ball first. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, that's just, that's the that's the base. And look, this is the thing about it. It's like it's almost like a tree. You can have the trunk of the tree and the base of the tree, and then you have a bunch of different branches. Well, in John Gruden's offense, it's always based off of a strong run game. So that's going to be the first and foremost thing. Josh Jacobs is going to have to be leaned on heavily. You heard John Gruden last week say, you know, uh, he he he's got to be there start to finish. That means sixteen games, not thirteen healthy. games, like he had his rookie year. He's got to stay healthy because he's so stinking important to this offense as Josh Jacobs goes everyone else goes as he goes then you could branch off and get busy with Darren Waller you can get busy with Henry Ruggs you can get busy with Lynn Bowden Jr but it all starts on the same page it's always started off and that's the run game with Josh Jacobs